Hey guys, Richard Blaine's Easy Cooking. I want to thank you for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. You know, for the last five, six months, I've been in request mode. People have been throwing all kinds of requests at me because they see that I enjoy Asian food and most of the requests I get are for Asian food. And last week I opened up my email and I found a request from somebody and he said, hey, I was about making some Jewish food. And I was like, I was like, I've had chopped liver. I've had matzo ball soup. I've even had matzo braai, fried matzo, but I really didn't know anything about Jewish food or Jewish cooking. Um, so I gave it a little thought and I answered and I said, okay, I'll do a little research and I'll come up with something to make. So I sat around at work thinking and thinking and thinking and doing a little research and I came up with a dish called kasha or kasha varnishkes. Okay, in Russian it's called kupreshkaya or kupreshkaya. My, my accent is not that good. Kupreshkaya. Okay, anyway. Kasha is buckwheat groats, the same kind of buckwheat that they use in Japan or Korea to make soba noodles, except in the Jewish community it's used to make something called kasha, which is buckwheat groats mixed with bow tie pasta, either egg bow tie pasta or Italian farfalle bow tie pasta, to make a Eastern European, a cultural Jewish comfort food, kasha. And that's what I'm going to make for you tonight, okay? So tonight I'm going to make the Russian version of kasha, kupreshkaya or kupreshkaya. I'm not Russian, so bear with me, okay? But I'm going to make this version of kasha for you, okay? Buckwheat groats, sautéed onions, garlic, mushrooms, some scrambled eggs, salt and pepper. It's a very simple food. It can be an excellent vegetarian dish if you use cooking oil, okay, and not chicken fat, because I'm gonna make it the traditional way, rendering chicken fat. But if you wanna make this the vegetarian way, then you use vegetable oil or olive oil, and you exclude the chicken fat. And if you wanted to make it the vegan way, you would exclude the chicken fat, and you would also exclude the scrambled eggs, or in a lot of cases, the Russians take hard boiled eggs, and crumble up the hard boiled eggs and put it in there. So this dish can be vegetarian or vegan, but I'm gonna make it the traditional Russian way, or as close to it as I can get. So as usual with YouTube, 15 minutes, let's get going, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay guys, here I'm making some rendered chicken fat, okay? This is chicken skin. I've taken it off a couple of chicken breasts. I'm adding just a pinch of salt and pepper and I'm going to render this chicken skin down into between two and four tablespoons of rendered fat. Now you notice I've cut the skin into small pieces, okay? because once this chicken skin and chicken fat have rendered, these small pieces will become something called gribbenes, which is a classic Yiddish Jewish snack food. It's the equivalent of bacon to the Jewish community, at least to the Orthodox Jewish community, and actually I've had this before, and it is delicious. Uh, to equate it another way, gribben is, is to Jews what chicharrones is to Mexicans. Okay, so I'm going to render this down to about two to four tablespoons, and then I'm going to separate the fat from the gribben is, and use the fat to prepare the kasha in the traditional way, and guess what? I'm going to add the gribben is back into the kasha. So, okay, so, now we're going to saute some onions. 
And we're going to add some garlic to it. Okay. Little touch of salt. Little touch of pepper. Okay. Want this to reduce down. And we're going to set this aside as well. And to it, we're going to add some mushrooms. I'm using criminy, about 10 ounces, about 10 ounces. Okay. Mushrooms soak up the oil pretty quick. So in this case, I add just a touch of water. Now raise the heat to medium, and I'm going to reduce mushroom onion and garlic until it's golden. Alright, now right here I'm scrambling three eggs in some chicken fat. I actually got about five tablespoons of chicken fat from all that skin that I was rendering. So, you're going to want to get at least five tablespoons as well. This is very fast. Here it is. It's done. I'm turning the heat off. And I'm going to break it up in the skillet. And I'm going to set this aside to add into the kasha. Okay. Okay. In this bowl, we're going to take one cup of kasha and one egg beaten. There we go. And we're going to mix this beaten egg and this kasha until the egg is sticking to all the grains. Doesn't take long. All right. Into some chicken stock, unsalted chicken stock. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and about two tablespoons of rendered chicken fat. This is going to be our seasoned fluid. And I'm going to let this come to a boil. And then I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. I've been toasting this kasha in this skillet with a little bit of chicken fat for about three minutes. The eggs, the egg that I stirred into it has dried and all the kernels are separate. On a separate burner, I have the two cups of chicken broth with the chicken fat that I'm now adding in. And then I'm going to reduce that to a simmer. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. So now, I'm going to reduce this kasha to a simmer and I'm going to cook it for between 6 and 10 minutes to get it nice and plump. Okay, Get it nice and plump. Okay. Add a little bit of pepper. Add a little bit of salt. Now I'm going to let this simmer for about yeah, 8 to 10. Okay, the kasha is done. It's absorbed the liquid. The buckwheat's soft and ready to eat. And I'm going to add a few things. There's the gribbon is from the reduced chicken fat. Oh. So delicious.
just so delicious. Here's the scrambled eggs. Three medium scrambled eggs. Okay. I'm going to mix that in here. As I said, sometimes the Russians, the Russian Jews, like scrambled eggs in the Kuprachskaya, Kuprachskaya. Forgive my accent, please forgive my accent. Okay. And sometimes they like ground hard boiled eggs in this recipe. But me personally, I prefer the flavor and the texture of, of scrambled eggs. And then into this, caramelized onions, mushroom, and garlic. All right. All right. Move that around. Get that in there. As you can see, this dish has many levels of flavor. Oh, yeah. All right. Get this mixed in. There we go. Get the chicken fat, and salt, pepper. Now mixing in all the flavor layers. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is better than rice. All right. So now that I've got now that I've got it all mixed in and leveled out, I'm going to turn the heat down to low. In fact, I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to let this sit for about five to ten minutes for the flavors to marry, and then I'm going to plate up. All right. I forgot to add the last ingredient: the bow tie pasta. All right, about one to two cups of bow tie pasta. I'm using farfalle. You could use egg bow ties, which is traditional in this recipe. And you could use the semolina farfalle, just like I'm using here. Okay, either one will work. I'm gonna mix this pasta in. Jeez, I almost forgot this. I can't believe that I almost forgot this. Okay. I'm going to mix this farfalle in, and then I'm going to plate up. Oh, God, this looks so good. I need to cook Jewish food more often. Look at this. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Okay guys, so there you have it. Jewish cooking. Kasha. One of my kasha recipes. My first of the kasha recipes. Russian Kupreshaskaya or Kupreshaskaya. Don't hold the accent against me. Okay. Buckwheat groats, scrambled eggs, sauteed onions, mushrooms, garlic. Okay. Chicken fat, the traditional way. Okay. Served by itself as a side dish or as a main dish, it's going to be my dinner tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. Make this dish. Make it your own. You can add all kinds of stuff to it. You can add meat to this, chicken, pork, beef. You can add whatever you want to this. If you want to make it in its traditional vegetarian method, then make it in the traditional vegetarian method. But the dish itself is very versatile. So make this dish, make kasha, and I hope you enjoy it, and I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.